heard that photons are timeless, you've heard wrong. They absolutely have time, just not the time that you and I are used to. First, let's get some philosophy out of the way. Unless you're a panpsychist, it should be pretty clear that photons don't experience anything. But photons can and do change from the moment they're emitted to the moment they're absorbed in a process called red or blue shift. In our universe, most photons end up redshifting. As they're emitted from galaxies and pass through vast swaths of empty space, they're stretched as the universe expands. So by the time they reach their final destination, they have less energy and longer wavelengths. And that means that they changed, which requires time. So what's the deal with the truism that photons don't experience time? Well, the way that we experience time is by what a wristwatch shows, and that's called proper time. One way to measure proper time is with a photon clock. Bounce a photon between mirrors and count a tick every time it bounces, and then calibrate appropriately. Because the speed of light is the same in every reference frame, each observer will always see their proper time flowing at one second per second. However, it's for that same reason that an object moving faster than you will appear to have a slower proper time. It'll take the photon clock longer to travel between the mirrors since the mirrors are moving. In fact, there's a nice formula that relates experienced proper time for a moving observer relative to another observer, and the speed of that moving observer. And if you make the moving observer move at the speed of light, that formula spits out zero, meaning that anything moving at the speed of light has no measure of proper time. And this isn't a problem with the formula, it's true. There's a more technical way to determine the proper time measured along any trajectory, and in fact we can define the speed of light as the speed at which the trajectory must move so that it has zero proper time elapsed. But importantly, this more technical way of computing proper time is essentially just a nice way of computing the length of a trajectory in spacetime, and it's not the only way of doing so. So, if we want to measure how much time is elapsed along a trajectory through spacetime, proper time is one way, but really, any way of parameterizing a trajectory that increases as you move along the trajectory works just as well. It just so happens that proper time is a nice choice, but it doesn't always work. So what should we do for photons? Well, we should choose a parameterization, which is equivalent to a measure of time, that shares features with proper time. For example, we should require that straight trajectories don't have a changing velocity with respect to this time parameter. This is equivalent to the idea that straight subluminal trajectories do not accelerate. And if we make that one simple requirement, we land on a particular choice of clock, one that corresponds to affine time. So what is affine time? Well, it's a bit looser than proper time. It gives a sense of before and after, but it doesn't give a magnitude of how much before and after. Similarly, it can tell you that along your light speed trajectory, some non-zero, non-infinite amount of time passed between your starting point and your end point, but it won't tell you how much. In technical language, affine durations are defined up to constant rescalings, meaning you can always choose another equally valid measure of an affine duration that is twice as long, a third as long, or whatever. But so long as an affine duration is finite and non-zero, all other affine durations will also be finite and non-zero. So a photon isn't timeless, it just doesn't have a proper time. But a photon does experience affine time, which explains why a photon can change. It's just not time like we think of it.